Everyone keeps telling us that we have to exercise. We keep hearing about it. It's become like meditation. We know that it is good for us, but we've heard it so many times that our brain just starts ignoring it. I am not here to tell you that exercise is good for you. I am here to tell you why exercise is good for your brain. So any one of you who has been waiting to hear a scientific explanation as to how exercise affects the brain, this video is for you. Before we start, a quick thanks to the sponsor of this video, Ultra Human. Ultra Human is a continuous glucose monitoring sensor, a CGM device. I've been using Ultra Human for the last one month to track my blood glucose levels throughout the day 24 seven. Whether I'm dieting, whether I'm swimming, going for a run or just sitting in my OPD, I know what my blood sugar level is and that has been giving me a constant feedback and that in turn has helped me change my diet and monitor my exercise routines. If you want to try out Ultra Human, check out the link below. With that, let's go to the video. Have you ever noticed how you're more energetic throughout the day if you've had a workout in the morning or if you've gone for a swim or a run? Ever wondered why that is? The human body is designed to move. From the earliest organism to the most evolved creatures, most of evolution's heavy lifting has been to make movement more and more efficient. And that makes sense. We need to move to be able to hunt for food, run away from predators or look for potential partners. But out of all those reasons, the first one is the most important, finding food. Food and movement have a deeply interconnected relationship. We eat so that we can move and we move so that we can find food to eat. Food and movement, diet and exercise. And what is really interesting is that our brain changes depending on which part of the cycle we are in. Are we eating or are we moving? We already did a video on the effect of food and diet on the brain. If you want to see that, check it out in the description. But today we are going to be talking about the other half of the cycle. How does exercise affect the brain? When you are moving, you're telling your brain that you need to look for food. This is the time for you to be more alert, be smarter, make quicker decisions and be able to remember things better. That is to have better memory. In short, we move so that we can tell our brain that we need to move more. Spend energy to be more energetic. We used to believe that the human brain does not really grow after birth. That is all the neurons are already formed when the baby is born. But we now know that that is not true. There are areas in the brain that can create more brain cells in a process called neurogenesis. And one of the areas in the brain where this happens is the hippocampus. The hippocampus, as some of you may know, is the site of memory formation and memory retention. Deep in the hippocampus is an area called as the dentate gyrus, which is the site of neurogenesis. Exercise increases neurogenesis. That is, it helps to form new neurons in the brain and also it helps in neuroplasticity, that is forming new connections between the neurons. So not only does exercise improve our memory, but it also helps in improving the connections between different areas of the brain. So how does exercise do these things? For that, we have to go a little deeper into the biochemistry of the brain. There are two molecules that I want you to know about. BDNF, that is brain-derived neurotropic factor, and IGF, that is insulin-like growth factor 1. Both of these chemicals are extremely important in the brain for forming new nerve cells and for forming new nerve connections. Exercise leads to an increase in both BDNF and IGF-1. There are several other chemicals that are also important that happen downstream, but these two are the main ones. The beneficial effect of exercise on the brain is seen across all ages. From the age of 8 to 80, exercise has been proven to have a positive impact on the brain. This study shows that exercise has an extraordinary capacity to improve mental health. It acts as a protection in Alzheimer's, in Parkinson and depression. What is interesting is that in Alzheimer's disease, there is a shrinkage of the hippocampus, which is what leads to memory loss and exercise has been shown to increase the size of the hippocampus. And that brings us to the last part of the discussion. What exercise is good for the brain? 
Now there are different types of exercises that you can do. There is aerobic exercises like running, swimming, there is weight training exercises, resistance training, flexibility training. While there are studies that have researched the effect of anaerobic resistance and flexibility training on the brain, most of the studies have focused on the effect of aerobic training. So how does aerobic exercises increase brain capacity? In three main areas. One is the cerebellum, also called as the little brain. Cerebellum is the part of the brain that is at the back and it is responsible for us maintaining balance. It helps to keep our movements smooth and fluid. Increased aerobic activity increases cerebellar connections. There is also improvement in the motor cortex, that is the part of the brain that is responsible for actually moving the hands and the legs. And thirdly, there is improvement in the hippocampus. There is increased memory formation and memory retention. But with all that being said, what is still more important is for you to find out what kind of exercise regimen works best for you because whether you are following an aerobic or an anaerobic exercise pattern or a mixture of the two, it is far more important to be doing it consistently. How often should you exercise? The current guidelines say that adults should engage in moderate intensity training for at least 30 minutes a day for at least 5 times a week. But if you are doing high intensity training, then you can do it for at least 20 minutes a day for at least three times a week or you could do a combination of moderate and high intensity training. I personally believe that we should be doing a mix of both aerobic and high resistance and high intensity interval training. Now that we've spoken about the importance of exercise in the brain, let's talk about the importance of feedback. Whether you're running, swimming, cycling or dieting, feedback is very important for you to know your own progress to change your behavior and your exercise routines accordingly. And when it comes to glucose monitoring, UltraHuman provides excellent real-time feedback. I've been using UltraHuman for the last one month and it has been a great experience. If you want to try out the UltraHuman experience yourself, you can click on the link below and join me. Become an UltraHuman cyborg yourself. If you enjoyed this video, click on the like button, subscribe to the channel, ask me any questions you have on how exercise affects the brain. I'll try to answer as many as I can. I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.